Good to go. All right. Hey, I'm Peace, and I guess I'm representing CryptoParty.org and trying to encourage you to start a crypto party in your town. So what a crypto party is, is basically it takes simple, well, common cryptographic programs and teaches the layman their fundamental operation to help people wear an internet condom, say. They're free demonstrations, open to the public, and completely non-commercial to ensure that you're not beholden to any corporation for having free stuff. And while I don't think I need to explain why privacy matters to this group, uh, there's some interesting things that I'd like to bring up that perhaps you haven't thought about, like what privacy you're actually entitled to in the public arena when you're giving speeches to the public, say. So in 1927, Lillian Jones uh, attacked the two men that brutally stabbed her husband, and the newspapers got wind of this and published everything about it and got really excited, and she sued them for invasion of privacy. She later lost, and the courts ruled that a person forfeits the right to one's life in seclusion when he or she, willing, willingly or not, becomes an actor in an occurrence of public or general interest. Which kind of parallels an even older idea from Macbeth, that you know your own degrees, which is to say, the degree to which a person is free to control their exposure depends on that person's place in society. And note, we're not animals. Mo most of us. Okay, and I don't mean like in a spiritual sense. I, that's, okay, and that's, yeah, sure we are. But, uh, <laughs> but W.H. Auden uh, differentiated us from animals when he spoke about the capacity for self-disclosure, uh, the human capacity for self-disclosure, and that implies an equal capacity for self-concealment. And by contrast, of an animal, it is equally true to say that it is incapable of telling us what it really feels and that it is incapable of hiding its feelings. So oppression attempts to reduce human capabilities to those of an animal by compromising our capacity for self-concealment. So when you start to promote your crypto party, the most common objection that you're going to hear is, ah, let them look, I've got nothing to hide. And you realize that's an incredibly naive idea. And our most abject surrenders occur behind the pretense of indifference. And to, I guess, establish a little ethos for Crypto Party itself, I'm going to go through the Crypto Party manifesto, uh, just bullet by bullet. So we are the users. We fight for the user. And we strive to empower the user, which kind of mirrors uh, some philosophically anarchistic ideas of mutual aid and solidarity that I like so much. The right to personal anonymity, pseudonymity, and privacy is a basic human right. This includes life, liberty, dignity, security, right to a family, and right to live without fear of, or intimidation. No government, organization, or individual should prevent people from accessing the technology which underscores these basic human rights. Privacy is the absolute right of the individual. Transparency is a requirement of governments and corporations who act in the name of people. So back to that V for Vendetta idea of people. Yeah, I vogue again? <laughs> uh, the individual, huh? You're gonna marry some? No? Oh, did she? Um, uh, the individual alone owns the right to their identity. Only the individual may choose what they want to share. And maybe this needs to be instilled in some of your minds. That coercive attempts to gain access to personal information without explicit content is a breach of human rights which is to say, don't break into people's stuff. <laughs> All people are entitled to cryptography and the human rights crypto tools afford, regardless of race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, political, jurisdictional, or international status of the country or territory in which a person resides. <laughs> Sorry, it's a long list, but I think it's important. Just as government should exist only to serve their citizens, it follows that cryptography should belong to the people. 
Surveillance cannot be separated from censorship and the slavery it entails. No machine shall be held in servitude to surveillance and censorship. Crypto is a key for our collective freedom. Almost at the end here. Code is speech. Code is a human-created language. To ban, censor, or lock cryptography away from the people is to deprive human beings from a human right, the freedom of speech. And finally, those who would seek to stop the spread of cryptography are akin to 15th century clergy seeking to ban the printing press, afraid their monopoly on knowledge will be undermined. It's been said that the printing press taught people how to read, and the internet taught people how to write. So a little background on uh, Crypto Party. It was started via a casual conversation by Asher Wolf on Twitter. Uh, she's from Melbourne. This is in late August of this year. Melbourne's first crypto party uh, brought 70 people, where they expected about 30. And it really exploded from there. London's expected 50 and got 120. It's in 43 countries other than our own. He's around the world. This is a list of the ones in North America. There's 14 crypto parties in America. They even have an online crypto party in case you can't make it. Um, but where I only have two pages in this list, I, I want to see this eight pages next time I give this talk. So hopefully you guys will take this to heart and start your own crypto parties, which is the whole point of this talk. So actually throwing a crypto party. Rule one, go to cryptoparty.org. They have all the resources you need to learn about the cryptographic tools that you're going to be teaching. Uh, also has great advice on how to start one. You don't actually have to listen to me, although please, please do. Uh, let's see. Lock down the specifics. Reserve your location weeks ahead of time. Uh, you're going to need internet to help people install the tools that you're advocating. Uh, make it free. Human knowledge belongs to the world. Uh, there. Don't be beholden to corporations for to pay for your pizza or whatever. You need to be able to speak freely without exception. Um, it also, they have this idea of pseudo leadership, S-U-D-O, like all you Ubuntu users understand, uh, where the people who go to a crypto party kind of take a leadership role each time and organize it themselves. I mean, while they're, I manage the Cookville crypto party, uh, I don't always give a talk, and I don't always reserve the room, etc. I do usually bring the wine. Uh, bring toys. Bring USB sticks of the programs you want to spread out, printed handouts of information about your particular speech, uh, old boxes so people can hack around and play with some of the toys. Uh, bring projects you're working on. With, let's say Arduino or something, and talk about Linux. It's important. You'd be surprised some people have never heard of Linux before. And in my mind, proprietary is another word for censorship. So also, because it kind of has this anarchistic philosophy and structure, if you want something done, you do it yourself. That, yeah, I think that makes sense syntactically. Yeah. yeah. Um, invite everybody. Everybody. Uh, go to journalism schools and make sure that they understand why they need cryptography to protect themsel themselves and their sources. Uh, impoverished areas, because more often than not, the poor are constantly oppressed. Uh, the Muslim community, ever since 9-11, this country has had a serious problem with uh, Muslims being oppressed and experience prejudice on a daily basis. Immigrants, similar story. Activists, like me are already surveilled, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, fringe groups, invite them to, even if they don't agree with you philosophically or politically, invite them. It, this is a human right, and don't be so arrogant to not share it with people just because you disagree with them. Uh, regarding your crypto party, after which you should get feedback from your users and kind of have this collective crowdsourced structure. Uh, size doesn't matter. It's your content that counts. And I like to live by the motto um, of explain it like I'm five, or ELI five, because basically you're going to be needing to teach these people, the layman who's non-technical, 
how to use these highly technical tools. So act like you're te teaching a 10-year-old who's going to go teach an 80-year-old. Uh, don't scare people. Let the government do that. T.S. Eliot said, humankind cannot take much reality, which is funnily followed up by Sartre's quote, hell is other people. Anyway, um, I encourage you to delegate your intelligence. So your first couple of meetings are probably going to be your close friends or whatever and people who know what you're talking about. And once you have a strong base set up and your crypto party grows and grows, you take those original members and you just spread them out throughout your group to help explain on a better teacher-to-student ratio. Uh, you're going to need to talk about Tor, off-the-record messaging, and pretty good privacy over and over again. These are fundamental tools to Crypto Party that everybody needs to know about. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I should, I should put that on here. Because uh, my suggested topics just include TrueCrypt, OpenVPN, and Bitcoin, but ITP is an excellent tool. You're absolutely right. Um, it doesn't have to be on this list. Uh, ITP is a great example. Uh, we've even had talks on like how to root your phone or how to set up an SSH server. Uh, but ultimately, the, the mission is the same. How to promote social networks like Facebook. But really, Crypto Party started on Twitter, right? And it's still just violently active on Twitter. Um, perhaps that's a bad choice of words. But make flyers. Uh, invite your graphic artist friends to help you make interesting flyers. People like pretty things, uh, and that'll help promote your group. Give promotional talks to girl and boy scout groups, at music festivals. I give, I present at our university. Uh, you could go to high schools if you think you can convince the principal that you're not evil, um, or nursing homes even. You know, don't leave anybody out. Chalk graffiti is your friend because it washes away real easy and you're not going to get in trouble for it. Make email lists of all your users for retention. Don't pressure them for, the, for it, but if they want to give you their email address, great. And definitely post your respective crypto party and city on CryptoParty.org. It has a running list of everything going on, and it helps everybody understand that we're all in this together, and it is, is absolutely everywhere. Uh, invite guest speakers like judges and lawyers who are experts on litigation concerning privacy. Uh, old 70s and 80s hackers. Uh, I'm going to try and get John Draper to come to Cookville. That's not going to work, but I'll try. Journalists who in the past have had to worry about their sources and personal security if they went outside of the country to, in particularly oppressive regimes. Or professors in computer science, say, who are experts and it's their job to talk. So they're probably pretty good at giving speeches. And keep, most importantly, and finally, keep it fun. We have movie nights uh, that actually was more popular than Crypto Party itself, which is kind of sad. But we would have picnics if it wasn't super cold. I was thinking about doing some crowd art stuff, so go buy an old sheet and some acrylic paint and just all paint together. That'd be fun. Uh, land parties, you're probably going to have a bunch of nerds there. Nerds love games. I do. Um, and post-party raids, which sounds terrible, but say like a critical mass of bikes where you ride around town and just post your flyers up. It'd be fun. helps build camaraderie. And celebrate holidays together. Like Monday night, we all got together, had Eggy in a basket, and watched a nice film about a guy with a mask on and blowing up Parliament. That <laughs> was highly successful. Um, that's that. Questions? Comments. I'd really like to get everybody's idea on how to make Crypto Party better. So, yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that that would definitely be fun. Thanks.
Oh, maybe I should stand up here. That'll be easier. So yeah, I'm from Oakland and uh, California. Has anybody heard about Occupy Oakland and all the stuff that's happened with it, with the tear gas and everything else? Uh, and, and I also helped to organize the Oakland uh, Crypto Party, which I saw on there, so thank you. And also thank you so much for all the work that you're doing, because this stuff is critically important. One of the things that we discovered when we were running the Crypto Party that we did is that it's really important to get people to understand why it's important to them. Um, I can give two examples just from things that happened in Oakland. Great. So um, first off, uh, with the Oakland PD, it turned out that when what they were uh, coming out and breaking up the, you know, the occupies or the protests or whatnot, they also had a system that was listening to all the cell phone traffic, and basically everyone who had a cell phone that was turned on at that time, all your traffic was being recorded, and they have records of everyone who was at a protest, and they're actually using that to do profiling. You just so, gave me chills. Right. Um, another example, this is actually a court case that popped up on, I think, October 13th in San Francisco, right as the Oakland Crypto Party was going on. There was another protest where police arrested a bunch of people, and they seized their cell phones, and they have not yet returned them as far as I know. And there is a bunch of legal questions going on as to uh, not just whether they can search, but also whether something is of yourself and how long they can hold things for. And there's, there's a bunch, because I mean, you know, once they return those cell phones, the question is, well, they've probably imaged them anyway. So oh, yeah. there, there are questions as to They're how they can return. Totally compromised. And uh, a final note on that, in California at least, they've recently passed a law um, basically allowing police the uh, ability to warrantlessly search your phones, your cell phones. So routine traffic pullover, they actually have a tool where they can download all the uh, data off of your phone. So I assume that this is going to be transferred everywhere else. It's been the stance of the Obama administration that if your cell phone traffic goes through a third party, like it has to, uh, then you have no right to the expectation of privacy, which is bullshit. Right. And uh, what was the guy's name, the uh, guy from Occupy Boston, who um, I, I think the DOJ subpoenaed uh, Twitter for his tweets because he had some deleted tweets while he was in, uh, I, I, I think while he was arrested in Occupy uh, New York somewhere, or Occupy Wall Street. So there are things like that going on, and given, given the fact that there are people who use these social networks, because you are simply a user on the network according to the law, when the government subpoenas the social network for it, like uh, with, with a regular subpoena or with a 2703D order as was with Twitter, they have, uh, often they're even gagged from telling you, let alone just having the courtesy of doing so. Yeah. And it, it, it's a really tricky situation. So one of the questions that people have is, well, why do I need to care about this? And the reason is because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, we're in kind of a cloak and dagger, uh, I, I guess, government world right now. And I think crypto party is a critical element in order to uh, help people to not even fight back against it, but more just stand up for your uh, basic civil bill of rights. Yeah, I think you're talking about Jacob Applebaum of Tor. Right. Yeah, where they uh, served Twitter a national security letter, which had judicial oversight to get his data, which is wiretapping, in my opinion, and totally illegal. And then they served them a 2703D, where, which gagged them from telling Jacob. Jacob found out exposed it to them and they arrogantly admitted to it so th there's a video of that where the FBI not director but a representative of the FBI is like yeah we know about your 23 OD which she can't legally say I think that's hilarious but yeah right and he also did a talk at William Benny is another one of the he's the NSA whistleblower that has stood up against yeah. all of this stuff uh, so uh, I, I we didn't cover that in uh, our crypto party, but um, it, it's still important. There's a lot of uh, really important things going on because right now we have all this technology that's allowing people to actually for once in a very long time have freedom of speech, and lawmakers are getting afraid of it because they're all bought by corporations, with a few exceptions like Dennis Kucinich and uh, Ron Paul and a few others. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just one of the things that I found is if you can get people to understand that while they might not understand it, they can trust you and that there's a serious cost to not doing this stuff, as in they could wind up in jail with charges they don't know about or being detained endlessly. Um, it's it just good to know, that's all. And uh, I was curious, with your crypto party, what were the things that people who came to it walked away with and they found were really helpful and beneficial to them? I'll shut up now. <laughs> so a lot of people that come to... Uh, the Cookville Crypto Party aren't really technically savvy people. Uh, most of them are chemical engineers because they're friends of mine. Um, so they, none of them knew what Tor was, uh, for example. And I haven't been able to give like 
other talks on OTR or PGP yet, but um, I've kind of let them go do their thing with that pseudo leadership mentality. It, afterwards, we all get together and I'll usually have, we'll watch a video of Jacob Applebaum or that Bill Benny at the Whitley uh, video say, which sounds like incredibly boring, but there's wine involved, so it's fun. Yes, ma'am. I mean, so by that we should like go ban guns and stuff, right? Now the tour was developed by the Navy. I mean, tour has half a million people every day. Yes, sir. Yeah. We, you know, there's a warrant and a specific tool for judicial oversight and investigation, and that's something that, that they seem to want to get away from. So it, it gets me really excited that governments are finally afraid of their people. Well, they should work for us. <laughs> 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 so I know you have looked into that a lot more than I have. Okay, so the idea behind uh, mesh networking is essentially, let's say all of us could pair our wireless networks together and say like you live in a neighborhood, so you go down the street, down the street, down the street, down the street, um, and then uh, someone in that neighborhood has a link to the other neighborhood and you're essentially creating an internet without any third party provider involved. Um, and I think that the awareness of mesh networking and the progress of mesh networking will really help advance uh, 
anonymity and um, lower the reliance of the third parties that the governments are using to uh, uh, to, sur to, su to do surveillance on us. Absolutely. I, I know the Reddit community has a pretty active role in that. They started with the dark net plan and then realized that's a really poor marketing stance. <laughs> so then now they just call it like the mesh network or something. I don't know. Yes, sir? Spies. So we're not doing anything wrong. We're asserting our rights, right? So if they want to come and actually learn about technology, great. Yeah, but that's not why we're then fuck them. <laughs> we're going to hire the best losers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh wow. That, that's the technique they um the government likes to uh likes to get people that have serious criminal records and say, Hey, we'll put you on the payroll for your eighty K a year, um, working under the FBI or whomever. You need to be a informant for this uh collision group they're uh, I can make eighty K a year at that? Yes. <laughs> uh, Will Pig brought that up to me when I uh, asked him about this. No, I haven't had a key signing party. I, I guess we could. I did, had not heard of key signing parties, to be honest with you, when I started this, but he brought. Right? <laughs> no, not the, well, yeah, I advocate key parties and, you know, the safety all around, right? Um, the comment that I wanted to add to the ha having key signing parties period, the way that we did it in Oakland, at least, we actually had it uh, split into two groups. We had an upstairs and a downstairs, so we could do that. The downstairs, which was bigger, we opened up for, um, we, we had different talks, and it was intended for beginners who maybe they didn't know math or cryptography or even computers at all, mm -hmm. and it was intended as an introduction. And we had upstairs the people who knew a bit more about it. We had key sign-in, there was a, a lot of arguments about MPOTR and things like that, multi-party OTR, and um, we just found that split in it and allowing people who were a bit more advanced to come and collaborate and even create tools if they wanted to do or discuss the pros and those discussions we could then put in a wiki, and um, yeah, it, and, and that we we did that in addition to having the introductory things, and we're fortunate enough to be next to the EFF, so EFF sent a couple people over and they gave uh, talks about Tor and OTR and things like that. So that's just something that we did that we found helpful. If if little old Cookville Crypto Party gets that big, hopefully we can split it someday. <laughs> and hopefully we can start one in Nashville. I'm a little surprised it's not here yet. So. SE 2600, yeah. Not, not. To it's called anarchist. It, no, it's not anarchy. It's fundamentally, that, no, him. Yeah, sorta. Yeah. Not to my knowledge. 
think you just kind of have to you know vote with your heart. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> huh. Hey, anybody else? We got Even with Bluffdale, Utah's installation, I mean, all their the, the point is, the point is that the, the point is that we have that kind of whole disk, very powerful whole disk encryption. That maybe not the you know maybe the NSA may have a chance, but national PD, forget it. Um, and you know, and so the point is that we have this very powerful encryption technology for our desktops and our laptops. We need that same powerful technology for our mobiles because definitely. If Yeah, there are certain steps you can take for that. There's Tor for your phone, or uh, I use Red Phone for a lot of my calls, which is encrypted VoIP. And uh, there's Text Secure that encrypts your text message database. And It does. Yeah. You have to give up your password. So with uh, Lux, though, it, doesn't, it provides this plausible deniability, yeah? That's not entirely true because they can show you in the court, or I'm sorry, they can show you uh, in the jail for contempt of court. The other thing with crossing the border is at the moment, at least, there has not yet been established. Um, you do not have a right to a lawyer because you haven't actually been admitted in the United States yet. And on top of that, they can detain you as long as they want. However, if you are a U.S. citizen, they have to let you in. But th this is really tricky gray area. Yeah, you can't like. His law, you need to use in your position. Right. So the, the, the challenge you run into there is that if you have, <coughs> there are two questions the law has to ask you have to answer. Uh, if you're lying about it, you could be in jail for a long time. Uh, long period of time. So one thing is that you have to use other people's password. And if you that's if you use like a rubber base type of system, then that's really not going to be useful. Uh, on the other hand, 
Brilliant. Mr. Hands all day. Brilliant. Yep. Yeah, don't don't travel with a hard drive in your computer. Yeah, just don't do it. But I think it's against, I think it's against the law to ship encrypted things across uh, country borders. Yeah. Duly noted. No, because uh, there's a guy in the UK who got sentenced to five years gigs of uh, space noise. They thought it was encrypted data and it was just a, a wave file of space noise. Yeah, so no, they'll, they'll fuck you for that too. True. So yeah, I think lemon wipes the safest way. Act nobly. Wipe your, wipe your drive with lemons. We good? Okay. Thanks. <laughs>